OpenBridge Designer captures the design intent of the bridge engineer while developing his project, as he's setting up the bridge, in this case a pristress gutter one, and having the roadway alignment as a reference, uh, the ground survey also as a reference, information in which the roadway and the surveyor retains the ownership of his information, the bridge engineer just plays his multiple supports for that particular bridge, setting up the bridge limits at maybe equal spans, different spans, information that could be changed at any time during the project. Not only the span length of each or one of the segments of this bridge, but also the skew angle, the different stationing can be adjusted not only in a table format, but also graphically as well. The next step into the bridge process is to place the deck. So the deck will be placed using a series of uh, user configured templates in which these points not only represent a fixed locations but also a variable ones. Could be variable deck width, deck width defined by a table, deck width defined by graphical elements. Uh, the super elevation of the deck would be a constant slope, uh, slope entered through a table or slope also using a, as a reference the super elevation file developed by the highway engineers. All that information and the reference points I'll be using could be given intelligence as uh, how the points behave depending on the deck thickness, how the points behave depending on the rotation given by the super elevation. And that information is being sent to the DGN file as a graphical element, as a 3D solid element, and becomes the deck of our bridge. That information is always also placed following the CAD standards defined by the engineer. That information, even though it's being seen in top view, is automatically sent to 3D. So the bridge engineer is developing the 3D model from the very beginning of the bridge development process. The next step is set up the beam layout. So could it be multiple beams with a certain skew angle? All the spans are the same, all the spans are different. So all these options as well are controlled by the engineer. The spacing of the beams on the pier line, skew angles, length beam types so as the beam layout is defined the next step is to assign beams to it so what type of beams are going to go into the different spans are they going to be the same beams are going to be different maybe it's a widening project in which some of the beams in the span are the same but the one two or three added ones are different so that option also available in open bridge designer could be achieved as a matter of selecting the beams in the provided library or the engineer as well could enter his own beam types and make it part of his project. Then that beams automatically will go place where it's supposed to be, below the deck. Then the 3D model is developed immediately. The next step on that bridge process is to set up the supports. Then, as the supports are set up, what type of supports are we going to place? Multi column piers, hammerhead piers, pile bends. What type of abutments we're going to place? You know, pile cap abutments, stem wall abutments. So all that options could be selected from our library. All that dimensions could also be 
uh, adjust it parametrically. So the back wall, it goes all the way up to the deck or not. So all these options are available without any extra programming effort from the bridge engineer. Because as he needs to concentrate in just developing his bridge and not programming one. And select the support where it's going to go. So it's going to be the first and the last uh, support of the bridge, of course. And the abutment is placed. Now for the other end of the bridge. Now he needs to place the intermediate supports. Right? That intermediate supports could be same, could be different, could be with different skew angles. Uh, also keep in mind that the supports could also be at a different depth because of the ground conditions. So the footings will be at the, also, as I said, at a, as a different depth. Then the supports. So we're going to place the supports, for example, here, all the same in all the piers. As I said before, this could be changed at any time and they could be all different if they need to be. Like isolated footings, drill shaft, combined footings. And this library, as it's provided, it's also uh, for the engineer to modify it. The support will be placed where it's supposed to be below the beams. Also, reading the ground information, as we can say, three feet below the ground, whatever the ground information was given to us. So, no more keying elevations and trying to adjust it afterwards. So, I got my bridge. Next step place bearings. So, the bearings could be based on a catalog, it could be based on dimensions, as we are entering that here. When we provide beam seat elevations, and these beam seats will be applied all across the supports, including the abutments that we just already placed. Entering the information, then we're going to select all the support lines. We're going to place then the supports below all these beams. And we're done. Now we can still review the information, change it as well. And place barriers for example so these barriers are going to go uh, on top of the deck on the left on the right side with a certain offset depending on your state or organization requirements select the point on the deck where these barriers will be attached to Remember the, point, the points on the deck templates, so we're saying on both extremes, one each, one for the left, one for the right, and we got our barrier. And then we have to do the same for the other side. Now, these barriers also are configured by the user. So, depending on the organization's uh, templates that they may have or they have developed, we can incorporate them into OpenBridge Designer and just be in place. So, no more generic barriers. Actually, we can place the one that they are the real intent for the design. So, we got now our barrier and the pre stressed girder bridge is now fully completed.